Welcome to the Lounge Lizards podcast. So good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo, and tonight I'm joined by Rooster, Senator Pagoda, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some tequila, talk about life, and of course, have some laughs. So take this as your 44th official invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke Cuban cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We discuss the interesting history of this marca. We answer a listener's email about New York City cigar lounges, and we wrap up the 2022 Battle of the Cuban Pyramids, all among a variety of other things for the next hour. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we pair Fortaleza Tequila Reposado with the Diplomaticos number two. Our first Diplomaticos on the pod tonight, the Diplomaticos number two, the final entrant into the Battle of the Pyramids. We've done five other Cuban pyramids so far on the pod, and this is number six and the final one. So really interesting that that uh, Diplomaticos closing that out because I think out of all of them, this is probably the one that... The, the most obscure for us. Yeah, the, yeah. The, we don't have much experience with this cigar. Yeah. Very curious about it, though. Yeah. I know Rooster, you and I, I think maybe Senator had some aged ones in your garage that time. Yeah, was it the number two? Was yeah. it this? Yeah, it was yeah. this. It so, was this? I thought that was a Unicos. No, it was. No, we had, no, we had one of these. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, anyway, I'm really looking forward to uh, trying this thing. What were we going to say? No, no, I don't think I was there for this. Oh, okay. So what are the torpedoes? Just remind us all. All right, so the other ones that, that we've, we've done so far. Yep. We did the San Cristobal de la Habana La Punta. That you all loved. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we'll discuss that. We did the Vegas Romania Unix, Unicos, the Monte Cristo number two, the Partagas Series P number two, and the 2014 H. Upman number two. So I have all the ratings and stuff. We can go through that in a little bit, see how cool. this compares. But first things first, boys, let's cut this thing. So there is a Cohiba pyramid. There is. It's about $800, though, for the box. <laughs> for a single. That's for, for, a single. for a single. That's true. But I'm not buying a box of Co- uh, Cohiba Pyramids, boys. Not too much on a cold draw. It's pleasant, but very light. Yeah, very pleasant. So this box is uh, two and a half years old now. It's from the La Corona factory in early 2020, right before COVID. The draw is nice and open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my draw is great. Mine's got a bit of resistance. Not bad, but maybe a little snugger than I'd like. Hopefully the same here. I, I thought it was a bit tight. Is it impossibly tight? Because I do have more. No, no, it's good. It's okay. good. All right. Maybe I'll just cut a little more. All right, boys, let's light this thing. It's got a little give to the cigar. Yeah. Yeah. The Diplomatico's number two. 52 ring gauge by six and an eighth inches long. Again, it's a pyramid. From Cuba. There's another line of Cubans that I find obscure, only obscure because I haven't tried them, is the is this an Sancho Panza line. I've never had one of those. Sancho Panza makes a, well, that's a Bellicosa, I guess. Yeah. And that's why I didn't list the, uh, the yeah. Bellicosas Finos from Bolivar mm-hmm. in our list, you know. Um, it's not a true pyramid. It's not a true pyramid. Honestly, I haven't taken a puff yet, but the smoke smells delicious. It's It almost smells like... Um, it's cocoa to me. Like toast or something. Mm. Kind of bready. I would honestly compare this to like a mild Monty 2 with not much twang. I, this, this is closest to a Monty 2 on it's the white. Bad. You know? I, but I think I'm there with you. I don't, I don't get the saltiness that you do on the Monty, but... The rest of the profile, I think, is very similar. A little earthy. Yes. Just touch the tip of your tongue on the cigar. When you take a draw, it's salty. Is it shit. salty? Yeah. On the lid end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get more than salt. <laughs> it's a bit ashy as well. You get a, you get a rush. <laughs> Senator's right, though. Yeah. Salty. It's nice. It's funny that I'm not getting that in the smoke, though. I'm getting it on the tongue, like you said, yeah. but mm. see if it 
picks up and develops a little bit. So what are you guys getting so far? Just very, mm. very pleasant smoke. Kind of like the it. The beginning is yeah. very nice. You know, it's a little creamy. Got a little leather. Maybe a touch floral. Touch. Yeah. A touch yeah. Um, graham cracker. Maybe a touch. Yeah, it's said bready. So that, like, yeah, just a touch. Yeah, nice. it, it's very refined on the light. For some reason, I don't know why, I always expected this to be a very flavorful, even robust cigar. That's just yeah. my impression, never having had anything in the Diplomaticos line. And it's just very smooth and elegant and mild medium and just very easygoing. Yeah. I mean, the aroma smells amazing. It's, out it's of fantastic this. smell. I, honestly, I guess that yeah, I'm glad you said that. To me, the aroma smells better than better the cigar than taste. The, yeah. yeah, honestly. When yeah. I was lighting this, I mean, Bam, I think was the first to point it out. I could. It, it smelled like you were yeah. in some kind of a bakery, bakery or something. And then I took a few draws and I said, "Okay, this is pleasant," but it wasn't delivering as much flavor as right. just the aroma on the light was mm -hmm. giving me. And that continues. I do think the flavor, though, it is. I would say mild to medium mm -hmm. it's not it's very pleasant yeah you know it's sophisticated elegant are the kind of words i'm drawn to definitely an indoor cigar absolutely that's the, a great point the aroma actually has some strength if, yeah if i could say that you know it's what's like, unusual it, there's it, it, simultaneously it's it, to me it's it feels and smokes like a delicate cigar with that strength it's really unusual like i don't know if this would satisfy after like a big, big meal. To me, this is like you're having a coffee in the afternoon or in the morning. Or in the morning. Or you're having a lunch with someone and you guys want, you know, somebody wants, you want to have a cigar with someone over a meeting or something. That's where I think this would fit well, that's, in. Well, that's kind of like most Cuban cigars are like that, right? I mean, give a, you know, like maybe there's a handful that you might want after dinner, but most of them are like, you know, medium, medium bodied, medium strength. But I mean, what, what Cuban cigar would you say is see, full? full I, I was hoping you were going to ask that. It's not that it's full strength. It's how no, it fits full in. Flavor, right? like, full so flavor. Right? So like even the, let's talk the pyramids, right? Yeah. They were, we just did the Battle of the Pyramids, right? To me, the Monty 2, the Upman 2, Upman two the baby. P2 are all stunners for me yeah. after a big hearty meal. Yep. Like I crave an Upman 2 or a P2. Yeah, P2, or yes. Monty 2. Uh, I don't know about Upman 2. Upman oh, two, I think it's oh. big to differ. But yeah. I do differ on the Monty 2. For me, I would slot that earlier in the day for me. See, That's I good. just love that, that. But the P2, Upman 2, those are great evening cigars. Uh, I'm in lockstep with Giz. I think all three after a meal, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I would never hesitate to pull one of those. Right? Yeah, I, I really love them after a meal because, you know, you know how we smoke. We're, we're wow. You never know, just one. it's never just one. So I'm not going to I'm not thinking like, OK, I'm going to sit down after a steak and have a Padron 90th. I'm going to work up to that. Yeah. yeah I mean, to yeah. me, to me, I would I would go for a Bolivar. Mm. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, like a Bolivar Royal Corona or a Bellicosa Fino. Beautiful cigars. Uh, something that has a little bit more spice to it. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm finding this to be very pleasurable. Yep. Very nice. Um, very smooth. And the smoke output's really nice. This is a tough question to answer these days. How much are these? So I got this box. So this was, this is, it's, it, this one's tough to judge because it has a little bit of age on it. I did get it for a decent price. Um, Probably about 15 bucks. Oh, a stick. Yeah. So thinking. actually they're a little closer to 20 now. They oh, were 15 prior God. to the, the price jump, but they're about 20, 21 now. It's ridiculous. So, I mean, for a box of these, you're looking at... Probably five twenty-five. You know, maybe with a little, like a little fresher, you'll probably get them for four eighty-five, maybe. You know, I'm shaking my head, but I just overpaid for a huge order that's coming soon, and you kind of, you kind of have to do it because you need, I need, I need inventory. But this is outrageously expensive for twenty-one bucks. Yeah. But that's the price of cigars now. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we just have to adjust our expectations and our spending accordingly. Not happy. No, or, or, no, no. or better time, uh, our procurement of Tower Humidors. <laughs> <laughs> How's yes. that going, Bam? Not good. <laughs> Where's it at? It's downstairs. I haven't touched it. Okay, so it's in the house. It's in the house. Is it still in the crate? No. It's I out can't. of the crate. Yeah, the crate's bigger than the, than the tower. So, and I was able to get it down alone. I got a little foldable hand truck. Not too bad. So what, what are you waiting for to do something with just it? Just time. I, need, I, wanna, I wanna spend a good hour or two working on it, but I just haven't been able to find the time. Energy and 
Honestly, right now, just the interest. Do you need Pagoda's wife to come over and readjust <laughs> the hinges? Yes. <laughs> she won't ever leave, though, because I have a whole list of things for her to do. <laughs> Pagoda, your wife is very handy, apparently. It's awesome. Very, yeah. Uh, so she just fixes stuff? She's excellent. Yeah, meaning um, she's, uh, well, she's got a tool belt. Ah. So uh, nice. that summarizes it all. <laughs> <laughs> a tool belt. <laughs> Oh. And, and and I'm completely opposite. Yeah, that's, that's I, impressive. I like to hire people to do things. How many uh, Vitolas in this line? Solamente uno. Yeah, I think there's only one now. I think this is the only one. They did have others. They had the number four, which was a petite Corona, and the number five, which was a little bit smaller of a petite Corona, but I believe that it's just the number two lasting now, That's right? That's it. Is yeah. that correct? So Diplomaticos is a line that they, that Habanos uses similar to, you know, El Rey del Mundo and, and some of the other provincial brands to release regionals. Like mm. LGC. Yeah. Well, yeah. Gloria Cubana. Yeah. Yeah. They only make the number four and the rest is all, it's all regional stuff. Same thing with the Diplomaticos. Okay. A bunch of regionals. I have not seen a limited edition of this. No. Right? The Ellie, not I think, I is. Recall. I think Ellie is reserved for the global brands only. Right. So, Co- Cohiba, Partagas, Upman, Monte Cristo. I don't think you'll ever see an Ellie of, uh, you know, uh, Vegas, Romania. Well, the Trinidad, there is. What's L E? Limited edition. Limited e- edition. ELs. Technically, ELs. ELs. Edition yeah. Limitada. Yeah. But I think Trinidad, I think they classify differently now, obviously, you know, or maybe they have been for some time. But Diplomaticos has a, an interesting history, guys. Um, so it was the first uh, brand of Cuban cigars that was created after the Cuban rev- Revolution and sold to the public. So that's, the reason why I say sold to the public is cool. Cohiba, we talked about when we did the Sigla 2 was obviously created, but it was a private label for Castro as, you know, for his personal smoking and as gifts. Uh, Diplomaticos was the first one that was created after revolution by the Cuban government uh, that, that sold cigars to the public. Cool. Yeah. And, and now Cohiba is a private label for another communist nation <laughs> in China. <laughs> it's exactly right. Funny how That's history exactly works right. that way. <laughs> history does repeat itself. So this was made like more for the masses. Well, this was this the idea of Diplomaticos and the way that they view this specific cigar is it's the the younger sibling of the Monty Two. It's a similar blend, but lighter. So the name Diplomaticos is kind of confusing, right? I mean, it you is. think that the Diplomatico would be for the diplomats or like given as gifts. Yeah, but it was actually made for. The common people or the masses of the. I love the band on this. Yeah, yeah it's I a cool like, yellow I like, band. I like the colors. Cool. I like the uh, very okay. simple awesome. combination. This is interesting. You said so. I feel the exact opposite. I really hate the bands. On this. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> you do? I think it looks extremely cheap. Cheap. <laughs> I think it looks really shitty. I, I feel like I could print this on my computer, <laughs> and I know nothing about graphic design. <laughs> so, it has a, uh, I guess a stagecoach. Hmm. Right? Is that a stagecoach on there? I can't tell. Like like Wells? It looks like that. I mean, this is the the fact that we're even not sure. (laughs) Right? I mean, who who made this? Here's a bigger version. It's definitely a... And what is this piece of paper in front of the stagecoach? Looks like a diploma. (laughs) I think it's a tractor. No, it's a stagecoach. Look, it's pretty big. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So the box is very similar. These come in dress boxes at 25. It's simple. Yeah. I mean, they only make one cigar, so they're not going to put too much effort into it. I think they need to hire Puba. They need a marketing oh, yeah. person. They do need a marketing person. I would love to refresh oh, yeah. the brand. I would love to see him working for Habanos SA. Oh, he'd have more. a cigar hanging out of his mouth all day he long. He would be in heaven. <laughs> Flip flops. <laughs> Post it notes all over the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting technique of managing your info. <laughs> so, what's interesting as well is uh, going back to the parallels to Monte Cristo, this brand when it came out they literally mimicked everything that monte cristo released like every size every regular production cigar they did a full mimic um and this was just a lighter version of it 
Nice. They used to have a shit ton of Vitolas. Yeah, they used to have a lot. And and that's like a lot of the other markers that, you know, kind of were canceled in the mm. 2000s, 2010s, kind of like Robania and some of the others. So why were these canceled? Just a pure lack of demand and they just... I think Habanos, <clears throat> when they came in, I guess it was in the early 2000s-ish, 2000, 2010, they canceled, you know, 70% of the cigars that were in regular production. They canceled all machine-made cigars. So that book that we... That the uh, rooster and I were talking about before we went on, um, the uh, Encyclopedia of Post uh, Revolution Havana Cuban Cigars by Minron Ni. Nee. Effectively, it, it came out in what two thousand three, maybe two thousand. I don't know when that book came out, but it's kind of useless now for people who are buying cigars today, because most of the stuff that's in there, it's. It's well, gone. Yeah. It's only used that's for That's why rooster. roosters have it. <laughs> it's a paperweight. That's, why, that's, that's why, why he's going through that's it. That's why I have it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not giving it back. <laughs> he borrowed it. He borrowed it. Are, are you still Permanently. reading it? Makota, I am looking at this massive box next to your chair. And I'm like, what is going on? Every time I look at a 50 cab of anything, I'm like. <laughs> the, the, the rooster eyebrow raise. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? R.S. Ramon? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Especially selected. Very nice. So, yeah. Um, I, can, I, I can give it to you for a premium, by the way. <laughs> spoken like a true Indian. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that. <laughs> Not to diverge from what you're saying, Gizmo. A lot of listener friends that I have, they ask me who's who and what is this guy's nationality? What's this guy's? It's interesting. No, you know. Don't tell him. No, no. I try to keep the anonymity at the highest possible. <laughs> yeah, I like when, I like when people uh, meet us and they try to guess who we are. You know who the what names are who. Yeah, it's funny. I don't know why they always confuse. They always obviously they confuse. Uh, Puba with you. Puba with me and Rooster with Senator. Well, you're the MC, so Puba, P- Grand Puba. You know, kind of. I don't know if I'm the MC. Oh, so I just I just saw this movie Top Gun. Mm. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> so remember the character Goose? Yeah. Yeah. Right? He, died. he was Tom Cruise's wingman. So his son, you know, he's a he's a pilot in this. And his name is Rooster. Get it. Yeah, his <laughs> name is Rooster. His name is Rooster. <laughs> what? He said oh, yes. that's right. He I said the photo. Picture. It yes. has Rooster on the helmet. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Wow. <laughs> that's funny. So, you know, every five minutes they're like Rooster. <laughs> and I turn my head, your head swivels. and then he puts a cigar out. What? <laughs> theater, the, the theater was packed. Was it? Nice. It was packed. Really? Yes. The whole back section, completely, every single seat was full. That movie's been out for a while. Now. So, so guess where I sat? Right where, up You front. know that that handicaps oh, chair. Oh boy, <laughs> it's the best. Oh it's boy. The best. So oh boy. I was, I was. So what? If you're a handicapped person and you bring in a wheelchair. So you obviously you sit on the chair, but there's a chair next to it that's supposed to be a companion for mm-hmm. a wheelchair person. But it's open to the public because if there is no handicapped person there, they don't need those no, chairs. You're so. supposed to find a handicapped person and take them to the movies with <laughs> right. you. That's, I couldn't find your companion. I was, I was too busy making returns at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's sacrilege. It's like parking in a handicapped spot. No, no, you're not. You're in a companion uh, companion chair. I so if know. they if I they come and they need the chair, so you have to vacate it. That's the of policy. Course. There are several Curb Your Enthusiasm episodes that explore oh. like every oh, element yeah. of what you're talking about right now. Rooster oh. is turning into Larry David. There's there's Denise handicap. Yep. There's the you, HOV those, lane. All right. So you know there's a bit of COVID and stuff going on. So this movie theater, there's literally just six chairs in that whole aisle, and you have extra leg room, and it's like you know like. Like a pair of two chairs and just six chairs. Nice. And uh, I think it's great. Mm. You also get priority being a lizard when we That's go right. to the movies. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Light up, free popcorn. It's part of the card carrying uh, prestige That's <laughs> right. of being a lizard. <laughs> w- were you smoking a cigar in the theater? Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Again, part of the prestige. <laughs> it's like, I'm sure everyone was thinking the smoke's coming out of those planes crashing left and right. <laughs> Great movie, by the way. Mm. Highly recommend. It. Give it a ten. A ten. Or a nine five. Okay. So pretty good. Pretty good. Segway. So on the Gizmo pretty movie good. scale, is that like a seven? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I have to see it. I, I'll have to. It. 
<laughs> we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, I, I, I'm not like a big. You will not walk out of this one. I, I, I only walked out. Of, I've only walked out of three movies in my life ever. <laughs> I've only three, walked out three, of three. I know of one. You know of one. You know of the Batman. Right. The Batman. Yeah. Yep. I walked out of uh, Les Mis. Did you walk out of Schindler's List? No. Uh, that's an amazing movie. I would walk out of most musicals. Yes. Uh, Les Mis was horrendous. And then I walked out of a movie with Angelina Jolie was playing a... Uh, why would you ever walk yeah, out of that Yeah, why would you movie? ever walk? Because it was like this CGI mutation thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Cru- like Cruella? Lo- Cruella? No, no, no. It's not Cruella? Disney. It was a long it's time not- ago. Beowulf. It was called Beowulf. Oof. Why would you even go see that movie? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, never, I never heard of it. I think I was dating a girl at the time. It was just the whole thing. Mm. Anyway, I walked out of that. It was horrible. But um, I've only walked out of three. Mm. Only three. You don't look at reviews before you go see movies? I do. I do. Way Miz is highly reviewed. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so was the Batman. What about Chicago? Did you see that? No, I've never saw that. You know, I think this uh, booze we're drinking is going to be highly rated tonight. So uh, Ricky is going to be very proud of us tonight, boys. Yes, he is. Because we are drinking. This this is quickly. The, it's it's sorry, go ahead. No, it's. I mean, the fact that we have Fortaleza in our hand, the Reposado. Ricky is really going to be happy with us because I love blowing him up on text, sending him pictures of my Don Julio with a pound of ice in it. <laughs> it drives him insane. So he'll be very proud of us tonight that we've continued the uh, Tradition. trend of. So we, really we, good tequila. We're going to have this neat. Yes. We're going to have it neat. Yeah, he'll be proud that there's no ice in the glass. Yeah. yeah. So the funny thing, before before you guys met Ricky and we had the whole tequila uh, indoctrination, I was with Ricky's business partner and we were at, at our clubhouse and he was drinking this. And he's like, oh, you really got to try this. Obviously, we were drinking Don Julio then and he insisted I try it neat. And this was like the first artisanal tequila that i had neat that i thought was awesome and then obviously shortly after that met ricky and we all got the full kind of Mm. tasting experience but this to me is a gateway into um artisanal tequila agreed yeah it's so fantastic and smooth you know i find it a little buttery at the on the finish Mm. right that's a nice way to put it. I buttery. agree. And you get that on the Reposado much more than you do their Anejo. Agreed. I really like the Reposado Agreed. in this. And I think this pairing with the cigar is it's, it's a f- it's perfect. perfect pairing. Because I do think that an Anejo or an extra Anejo here mm. would be would maybe push a little too much against what the cigar is doing. Sure. I think it would overpower this yeah, stick. Sure. I mean, this is yeah. not a full-bodied stick. No. And the butteriness of this tequila you don't get with ice. It's only when you drink it neat do you get that buttery finish. It is, it is odd how the ice cuts that. Yeah, it's a, it's, and it's a shame. Because I was having this the other night um, on my deck with a couple cigars, and I had some ice in it just because it was warm out, you know, in summer. And uh, it, it was not buttery like this at all. Right. At all. It's so funny because I had a sip, and I was expecting a taste like whiskey. And it tastes like tequila. <laughs> so <I'm> like, All <laughs> right. <laughs> Pay attention, Pagoda. Yeah, no, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for the listener, by the way, uh, back in June, we're referencing, uh, we did a two-part tequila deep dive with uh, chef partner Ricky Camacho from the Anejo uh, Restaurant Group. We did that June 14th, June 28th, episodes 32 and 34. So if you're interested in tequila, and you're just tuning in now. Go back and check out those episodes. A um, couple months back, uh, two-part deep dive on, on artists and tequila with a guy who knows way more about mm. tequila than I probably know about anything in my life. <laughs> I mean, it's very impressive. Very impressive. I also really love this brand. Obviously, we did the Anejo with Ricky when he was on the podcast, and this, this is the Reposado. I just think you look at the bottle. I, I love... I mean, the, the topper is a, a pina mm-hmm. that Ricky explained, right, in the agave. The bottle itself, it, it almost looks like handmade glass. Yep. E- everything is uneven on it. It's, it's not perfectly. It's a, it's a burled finish on a glass. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's like you're truly seeing how artisanal this product is when you even just look at the bottle, let alone once you taste the liquid inside. And um, I just think their whole line is so interesting and accessible that this brand I would be stunned if is that if they're not acquired by you know one of the big like a right. Diageo or something in a few years time. 
Yeah, it seems it should be a, a more expensive tequila. Yeah, it's actually what it is. be priced. I picked this up at our uh, local liquor store here. I think it was sixty five a bottle. Wow. That's I think great. that's I think that's fair. I do too. Ricky was pretty convinced that this brand is going to be very very popular in a few years, mm. available everywhere, and hopefully it doesn't get tainted by its popularity and its demand. And, and, hopefully, and, and an acquisition potentially, but right, which means usually a price increase and a price increase or a quality decrease or right. both. Right, right. I also very encouraging. So I was in the city the other week um, for an event, and I wanted to just find a place right nearby where I needed to be to grab a drink before. And I, the only place nearby was this supper club. I'm forgetting the name of it. Very nice, cool place. They have a little stage. They do live music very nicely decorated and there's a bar in the back and I'm sitting at the bar. Now, mind you, this is not a Mexican restaurant. It's all new American food, steak, seafood, all that. And uh, I look at the tequila section on there. I was floored that this restaurant that is not a tequila bar, not a Mexican restaurant, had tons of bottles of tequila and stuff that Ricky has given us and recommended. Uh Don Filano, Fortaleza, El Tesoro. And I think I had sent you guys a screenshot of some of it. Oh, that's right. And and, uh, Ricky's like, man, you probably were the the bartender's best customer all day. Yeah, I went a little aggressive. I tried something (laughs) special. (laughs) It was like 50 bucks a Oh, my gosh. (laughs) What'd you get? I got the... um, uh, Don Julio. Don... I think it was the Don Filano Extra Anejo. Okay, I think we've had the Anejo. And, oh, my gosh... Wow. Awesome. That that's it drinks like a like a whiskey. Nice. I mean, really flavorful. It was so delicious. But amber, I just amber colored. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. But just so encouraging. I mean, it's just crazy how much tequila has exploded now that you just walk in a random restaurant and they have a tequila list that's longer than the tequila sold in some liquor stores. Wow. That's probably indicative of the owner loving tequila. I was just going to say the same thing. That's probably the why. Because I've been to so many big restaurants and they just, they're the the tequila. We talked about it on an earlier episode. You know, they just, they don't even know what they have. They don't know what they're serving. Yep. And, and the alcohol buyer, I don't think they're that educated. Right. It's got to be the proprietor's passion for it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So wherever you were, they must really love tequila. No doubt about that. So we're about uh, an inch and a half in here on the Diplomaticos number two. What do you guys think? I don't know, I'm getting some floral notes on this. Yeah, I said that earlier. Okay. Yeah, Faint floral, dried fruit a little bit now. I like it. It does really kind of remind me of a lighter Monty 2. Yeah. Or you pull, yeah. you pull a Monty 2 out of a box that's just not very strong or very fragrant. This kind of is, is what I get from that. You know, I, I had a box of Monty 2s from... 2018 or something and they were not what the 21s and 20s that i have are um they're much more mild much closer to this This is like a perfect sunday post brunch cigar yes i right like that right. right on the nail you could I even like have that. this with like some nice champagne yeah mm. i agree at yeah. brunch bellinis you know that kind of thing absolutely i do think this would work really well with champagne 100 percent and a, and a light white wine. Let's give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> Grab the champagne, uh, Ben. <laughs> Garcon. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. So you mentioned uh, being in the city, Senator. And we had a, a listener of ours message us on the Lounge Lizards Pod Instagram account. And I want to read you what the listener said. So uh, it was our friend Grizzly Adams. He said he's got a trip uh, coming up to the city. He was looking uh, for advice on cigar lounges and bars down by Union Square Broadway and East 8th. The only place he's been to, he said, was Carnegie Club, and he was looking for some other options. So Puba responded to him kindly and gave him some other options. Um, but I'm curious, as we've talked many times about destination cigar lounges, a lot of us travel quite a bit. We're always looking and talking about it. Our friend uh, Henry went out to Vegas. Mm. I, I pointed him to a couple lounges out there, including a new one that just opened up I saw. Pretty high-end place. What are some of your favorite spots? Let's start in New York City, and then we can kind of work from there. But what are some of your favorite smoking spots in the city, and what, what spots do you not like? I mean, I'm happy to start because I have very strong feelings about this. <laughs> um, I'll start with the city. And, and uh, I mean, a, a spot that I really like 
is uh, Club Macanudo. Mm -hmm. And I say that because all the cigar lounges in Manhattan are expensive. Right? You're not going to any of these places and expecting you're going to have a cheap night. And so with that premium comes a really, you expect, and it, and it is a New York standard, that there should be a really nice experience. And what I really love about Club Macanudo is sort of from start to finish, they take that very seriously. And I'll just never forget. I mean, the first time I went there, it must have been a holiday and I was going with my family. They've got doormen outside, yep. like you would expect, you know, in a building in Manhattan. Instantly, two people open the doors for these giant double doors. You walk in, there's a coat check in there. Wow. Immediately. It's like you're at a, you know, private members club in the mm -hmm. city. That's exactly what you'd expect when you walk in. Someone obviously then, you know, you want to sit at a table, you want to sit at the bar, where, where do you want to be? They get you seated. Service is great. I think the aesthetic is very nice. Um, I've never once had a bad experience there. Uh, so I am always perfectly happy to pay, you know, whatever the, the premium is to, to enjoy a cigar there. The only criticism of the place, I think especially the pandemic, because I was there recently, they have taken out a lot of lounge mm. seating yep. and they have a lot of tables. Now, ironically, the chairs at their normal like dining style tables are more comfortable than some <laughs> lounges, actual lounge seating. Mm. Um, so I'm always comfortable when I'm there, but I do wish that they actually pulled out some of these tables and put more couches and lounge style seating. And I say that because the complete opposite contrast is to that. You said, where don't you like? Yeah. Um, and I love that listener's question because that person said that they've been to the Carnegie Club and they're looking for something different. So there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Yep. Which is they clearly have taste and recognize his oh, laws. Excuse <laughs> That is me. a slap in the face. <laughs> what a dig. <laughs> Holy <laughs> moly. <laughs> they recognize the flaws with that place where you walk in there, there's a bunch of like, 22 year old kids it looks like waiting tables that have no interest or regard for what they're doing and mm. how much customers are spending there they have seating in there that literally looks like a decaying body that is so worn down over such <laughs> a period of time <laughs> i mean i took a photo i was gizmo was there once i think he drove into the city to drop one of his kids at a concert and had a cigar i on a whim just said screw it i'm gonna come in i met him for a cigar there it was my first time being there and we're sitting in these chairs in the corner, and it, it, I'm not exaggerating. The arm of the chair, I have a photo. I sent this to several people. They could not believe this. It's the single most disgusting thing I've ever... It, it was as though, like, just human skin. It, it was disgusting beyond words. Anyone with an ounce of class or that cares about their business would see that and replace those seats immediately. Yep. I don't think that yep. that takes much. I go there a second time. I'm sitting at a completely different area, and they have these little coffee tables. I hilariously put something down on the table, and it is a piece of metal that is completely hollow, totally slanted. So my drink glass is sliding. <laughs> no way. On this piece of, I <laughs> like mean, you're on a boat? <laughs> like, I mean, th this must cost like $10. This is a nice place. And, you know, if this were a dive bar, by all means, if I'm eating off of a piece of metal, I could care less. This is supposed to be a high-end cigar lounge in Manhattan that charges $25, $30 for a Macallan 12, a yeah, Habiki crazy. for you know, any of the stuff that we would crazy. drink in order. You can't operate like that. So from a staffing perspective, I think the people are entirely unprofessional there. They need to hire some people with experience. I think the, the chairs desperately are in need of being replaced. Um, the tables are a complete joke. I mean, I, the tables here, and we're in the most casual of settings right now, are, are sturdier and more and, and more presentable than the yep. stuff they have in that place. So I I've, I really, really dislike yeah. uh, Carnegie Club. I do love Club Mac. I've been there four or five times. And honestly, you can get a meal there for under 50 bucks and a pretty good New World cigar for under $25. That's a bargain to me. And I think to a lot of people, especially if you're on vacation, great right. destination. Fantastic. The, the last thing I'll say very quickly. So the one thing that Carnegie Club does that's very, um, it's almost legendary at this point because they've been doing it for so long are Sinatra Saturdays. Oh, yeah. So for years. I've always wanted to go. I've never gone. I mean, we've talked about it as a group doing it. For years, I wanted to do it. And it was a big birthday for my dad. So I had, uh, we went to Sinatra Saturday there um, for his 60th. And I just could not believe so they say when they have this, because the, the whole, uh, the guys performing, they're in tuxes. It's a very, you know, formal thing. They've got like, a, I don't know, 
10, 14 piece band. It's like a whole thing. And uh, they say there's a dress code. They say the dress code is business casual. Now, I had even called in advance just to make sure, you know, how rigid is this dress code? And they basically said, if you're wearing, you know, nice jeans and a collared shirt, at a minimum, you're fine. Okay, that's what you'd expect going out in most places in New York City. I get there. <laughs> there are guys wearing shorts, a T-shirt that barely can fit their stomach, and, like, flip-flops standing at the bar during all of this. And I'm just sitting in there. Club Macanudo would never let someone in. Nope. This is a Saturday evening in Manhattan. There are restaurants you wouldn't be able to go in and eat, let alone you pay a 30 or 40, I think you pay a $40 cover per person just to walk in. There's a two drink minimum per person. So when you do the math, it's like $100 per person, just bare minimum to be able to go there and experience it. And so again, you're paying for an experience. And when you see that, it, the whole place to me needs new ownership. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Merchants is just like another, the Knicks. another nice spot. <laughs> it's like Love the it. Knicks. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I will say, though, here's what I will say, and, and this is not in defense of the Carnegie Club, but Pagoda and I and Senator, when we were there, we've had some good times at that place. Really good times. Like, uh, in spite of that place. In spite of that place. <laughs> you're not wrong about the seating, but it does have a vibe, and it has this... I don't want to call it a charm, but it has this thing that it's like it is one of the, the last standing places in that city where you can go and have a cigar at midnight, you know, or whatever it is. Very so, high ceilings. Very high ceilings. I don't disagree with that. So I, I, I don't want to I don't want it to I don't want us to completely eviscerate the place. You're not wrong in anything you said. However, I do think that there is something about the place that's redeeming. And with, let's say, a ten thousand dollar investment. <laughs> in new chairs in new chairs <laughs> and tables the, and tables the and place the, and, the, be, and the staff and the staff the staff, the staff, the staff is, is definitely a problem yeah and, the staff you is know, definitely if you, a if you have a if you have a dress code you know follow it and like keep it keep it sort of rigid i mean you know have like if you want like jeans and a button down shirt so yeah that that should be it you shouldn't be allowed with shorts especially and, listen i i a dress code on a monday at 2 p.m who cares but uh, to Saturday your point, night, Saturday, Saturday night, night when you know, it's a special night, you're spending a hundred bucks to even just walk in the place, mm -hmm. a minimum commitment. You know, that, that's that, I totally agree on that. And so, I'm not a dress code guy. And, and to your point, though, where I don't why I say I don't disagree at all with what you're saying. That place has so much potential. It does. It it's, could be a great place. Yes. It has this library like feel to it. If someone just knew how to run that business, wow. it could be an outstanding lounge. So and I where agree. it is, too, is perfect. Also, the location is location's, the location's great. perfect. What is it? 55th? 56th. 56th. Right yeah. in Midtown. Yeah, right in Midtown. So, so it seems like it's not, it wouldn't take much to kind of change the place a little bit. I mean, it just seems like furniture and some staff. Yeah. Yep. Some yeah, rules. but it, some... it seems like it's been very difficult for people to, uh, you know, come and work over there. But having said that, you're why? right. If because Club Macanudo can do it, why can't I, Like, I haven't been, to, firstly, I haven't been to Club Macanudo at all. Uh, so, I've never been there either. And, um, but I go to Carnegie often, so much so that I'm there at least once or twice a week, weekly. It's so convenient for me. Right. You know, I work right there. You know, it's, uh, you go to David off, you can buy cigars and you can take them there and uh, they don't charge you a cutting fee. So it's very convenient, you know. Uh, they serve beer, which you can get for seven, eight bucks in happy hour and around 10 bucks otherwise. And you know, liquor is around 20 bucks plus or minus, which is reasonable for the kind of place it is. Services, yeah, uh, you know, ser service is definitely somewhat challenged. Yeah. But having said that, you know, the location's great. Um, the ceilings are very high, so you, it doesn't get overly smoky unless you're in certain pockets of the of the whole place. So there, there, there's some really good positives. Very casual, easy to go in. You can go in with you know, a couple of people at any time, not a, not a real big fuss about reservations and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, oftentimes you're not in a jacket and you can get... Doesn't Macanudo have a, a, a jacket of the a dress code or no? No. no oh, it do doesn't? Not. All right. No. I've yeah. never wore a jacket there. Same. And considering that there are only, like, I think nine places in the city now you can smoke, uh, it's uh, definitely yeah. one of the... Uh, better ones, which, uh, you know, definitely has a lot of room for improvement. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you go to Soho Cigar Club, it's by Ryan Canal. You know, the ceilings are so low, it gets so smoky. It does. You can't see each other. You go to yeah. Cigar Inn, which has its advantage that uh, it's BYOB. There's a liquor store around the corner. 
It's on the east side. And um, what I find over there is, it, you know, they don't have really good smoke eaters and that gets very smoky as well. Don't forget and, uh, bar and books. Yeah. Oh, th- that's great. But I love that spot. Th- that's a great spot. It yeah. feels, um, um, so, you know, it's, a, it's very it's expensive. The drinks are very expensive. <sighs> Everything there is expensive. Expensive. Is yeah. there is there a place that you could smoke outdoors that's like kind of open? So bar and books, they've got tables out front and I've sat there a lot. Any any like rooftop type places that you could smoke? Apparently at? there's a you, place in I, the Bronx. It's a Latino Cuban restaurant and they've got a rooftop. I don't remember the name of it, but you can smoke on that. And I hear it's spectacular. So there used to be a place, I'm not sure if they still allow it, but the Empire Hotel, which is near like Columbus Circle area, their rooftop, they have two outdoor portions in the middles in, uh, enclosed. Mm. And in one of the outdoor portions, you could smoke and it was great. You wow. could sit out. You got a beautiful view of Manhattan, smoke cigars. They were 100% fine with it. That sounds cool. Um, I'm not sure if it's still the case. You know, COVID, is, it feels yeah. like changed so much. But it was a great spot to be able to do that. Yeah, pre-COVID, you could smoke at the rare lounge, which was, it's around uh, 30s in Lexington. The rooftop, you could smoke. Uh, Knickerbocker uh, Hotel, which is on 42nd, right by Times Square, you could smoke. So there were a lot of places which would allow uh, smoking up on the rooftop. But I don't know. I haven't been a lot at. This is really the first summer after COVID when things are really opening up. Right. Uh, but... Um, you know, yeah, yet to be found. We, we were at Pier 17. Yeah. Um, just this past weekend, which is by South Suite Seaport, kind of like way down uh, by the financial district. Pier 17, great spot. They have a massive rooftop restaurant. Um, they do concerts, so it's 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 big. It's huge. Uh, they have ton, they have like at least six restaurants, like one on each floor. And the restaurants like Malibu Farms. Momofoku, uh, oh, a bunch of bunch of other places. Some steak steak place. Uh, John George has a place there. I think it's called the Fulton Fulton Market, overlooking the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge. I mean, great spot, beautiful views. But the rooftop would be ideal for an outdoor smoke. I sure. mean, the, the tables are like spread apart, but absolutely not. They don't they don't yeah. allow that. You know. Um, yeah, things have changed so much in the city. I yeah. think what's hard is, especially with smaller places, it becomes tough because if you try to kind of divide up a rooftop and say, well, here you can smoke and there you or it's not smoking, the smoke is going to blow over. So I get you're going to have the person who gets really pissed off and it becomes a headache for the business. The ideal setup, which is why I mentioned the Empire Rooftop, to have two outdoor parts that are just at opposite ends and an enclosed indoor space in the middle, it's totally separated. Right, so you have yeah. one area all by itself for people to smoke, and then you go on the complete opposite end. And if you don't want to be around smoke, you're out on an equally great rooftop. That's kind of the perfect. Well, setup. this this Pier 17, believe it or not, had like an like a covered indoor structure in the middle, mm. and they had the massive rooftop uh, where, where they do the concerts. But then on the other side, there were structures that just had a roof. And they were open on all sides, like a lean and they to? were a little small. No, not lean to, like big. You oh, know, okay. with like. Um, like couches and stuff, oh, sectional wow. couches. Those would be perfect spots perfect. because it's away from, you know, the the main area. They could easily convert that. You should light up there and see what happens. Ru- I, 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 I tried. I tried. Did you? I did. Oh, I did. Does that really surprise you, Bev? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Is this Pier Seventeen the place which was supposed to be? Restaurants of the world with uh, Anthony Bourdain and no, I'm not sure and if a couple that's of guys getting together to try and really set up. Yeah, food I'm not sure from, if that is the one. I is don't it, know is, is it all the... relatively new? Because yeah, that, all right. Yeah, yeah, fairly new. Yeah. I got a I got a question about Macanudo Club Macanudo. Hmm. So, what do you think the move is to pull chairs and put tables in? Is it it's more tone? Is it more turnover? Is it requiring food and drink? Is it not having people like us sit there for six hours at a given time? Uh, no, no. I asked them. They told me. Um, it, the issue was they needed more capacity. Uh. They were getting really filled up. And when you have couches, especially when you have like a three-seater couch, you're never going to have three people on it. It's going to be two people yep. at one end. There's an empty seat in the middle that gets wasted. So <laughs> it was just eating up space where there was just so much more demand that they were trying to accommodate more Makes customers. Sense. Makes and sense. also, I think we talked about this, the Grand Havana Room closing Yeah, permanently. That's, that's what did it. Drove so, a lot of the... Yeah, your high end customers there, right? Yep. Spot on. Yeah. Most of the guys that were regulars at um, the Grand Havana room flocked to Club Macanudo after. Right. 
So for the listener, the Grand Havana Room was kind of like the, what, celebrity high-end destination of cigar smokers in New York City. Very private. Exclusive. Very private. It was a club. Yeah. You kind of needed to know people, right? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, and they have multiple locations. There's, there's one in LA that still exists. Hmm, cool. Yeah. So we'll come back to this in a second because I do have some questions about outside New York spots. But what are you guys thinking about the uh, Diplomatico Two about halfway through here? What do you think? It's kind of uh, evened out for me. Yeah. yeah. It's got yeah, to it's, a plateau, and it's 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 still enjoyable. Yeah. It's yeah. not quite like the first third of of the stick. I mean. Uh, those flavors were, I was getting a lot more aroma out of the smoke as well. Right. Which has kind of subsided a little bit. I'm not really quite getting that enjoyment I was getting in the beginning. I'm, I'm with Rooster. I, I feel the sort of middle of this has just kind of fizzled out. Um, I'm not getting it's as much flavor. Um, it's not offensive, but I, I can't pick out any interesting flavor notes at this point that I'm getting that really excite right. me. It's just very bland. Right. It's like just tobacco. Yeah. 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 Right. Seriously. I think I think floral. I'm getting more floral now than anything mm-hmm. in the middle here, uh, but it's kind of muted. I, I feel like yeah. it's muddled. It's not. Uh, it's not bad. It, it's not bad. It's no. Like the senator said it's not offensive. No. But to me. Um, if you're only going to make one stick, <laughs> make, make it a fucking good one. Make it right? awesome. <laughs> make it a good stick. You know, have it needs a little bit more. Very it needs true. more flavor from top to bottom. I mean, it is a number two. Number two is a, you know, it's like a coveted batola. You know, if if for you know for lack of better words, I mean, it's your it's the only stick you make. Right. So I think there should be better blending in this cigar. Yeah, I agree. To, to Rooster's point, they've got one shot to draw a consumer to appreciate this brand, and this is it. And uh, I, I, I'm with you. There's not a whole lot you get out of this. And I think a brand that is similar in some ways is Bolivar, who doesn't make all that many Vitolas. Yeah. Right? There's what? At most four? I think it's... you got uh, Petit well, you Corona. you got the Royal Corona. Royal you have the Corona. BBF, yep. uh, Bellicosis Finos. Petit, then you have Petit the Corona. Petit Corona. And there's, um, there's one more little short guy, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Is it shorter a, than that? I, can, I, can look. I forget what it's called. Either way, they, they yeah. only make four or five, right? Which right. is way less than all the other major brands. And? And to their credit, that's what we always say. We appreciate Bolivar. They're great. They stick to what they know and what they do well, and they are fine not making any more than that. But when you light up a Bolivar for the first time, you're going to remember it. And huh. I'm just so surprised so, to have only one, and I'm not going to remember. This is not memorable. Right? We actually missed a couple. So they have a, a Bolivar Tubos number two. Which is not a pyramid. It's a petite corona, but it's in a tuba only. They have a Coronas Junior, the Bellicosos Finos, Petit Corona, and the Royal Corona. So we missed two. So and they also have a uh, La Casa del Habano Exclusivo, which is the uh, Libertador. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So the, the and there's uh, a new one coming out in 2023, which is going to be a new gold medal. Uh, uh, which will also be an LCDH exclusive. Yeah, nice. that, that's really sought after, yeah. that gold the metal, gold, The gold, gold label. Yeah. yeah. Like half of the stick is covered in like gold foil. Really? I mean, not, not I mean, just the color is gold, sure. but yeah. I think Bam will be able to source that very quickly. <laughs> 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 I am a sucker. So uh, before we get back to the lounge discussion, I'm curious, you know, we, we mentioned that we're kind of wrapping up the Battle of the Pyramids here on the pod, mm. at least for 2022. I'm sure we'll revisit this in a couple of years, but let's go through the scores of the other five that we've done and kind of see how we're feeling about the scores, how they, if they're accurate or not, and where this stacks, and let's, let's judge ourselves a little bit. Yeah, Up, Upman 2 was, was the, the highest. Was the yeah, highest so that was a 9.8. Right? Yeah. Now, we have, to, we have to factor that that was a 2014 cigar, so it was eight years old. And a great time. box code. And a great box code. Yeah. You know? Um, in second place was the Partagas Series P number two at an 8.7. Wow, it's quite the drop. Quite the drop, a full point. And then, uh, well, you're, then you're well, Monty 2. Monty 2 was an 8.4. And then Vegas Robania Unico was an 8.2. And then really a major drop the punter. was the, <laughs> <laughs> the punter. 
<laughs> San Cristobal de la Habana. La Punta. Uh, by the way, thanks again for that, Ben. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what was that rated? <laughs> I, uh, I by, the way, wait, wait a minute. by the way, Bam has brought us two sticks. One was the Opus. 6.6. <laughs> 6.6. 6. 6. And... The La Punta, which thank is you. a 5.9. Four, 4.8. I thank you for reminding me. <laughs> They're all coming from his top I'll see you guys tomorrow, guys. Take care. <laughs> so, uh, keep do you up think the those, good work, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you think those scores, how do you think they, they fare? I think, that, I think that's a pretty accurate representation of how I feel about the, the, I, the I have a question the about the Upman 2. If we were to smoke a younger Upman 2, I wonder if that would get such a high rating. It definitely wouldn't get a 9.8. I think it would be very close. I think a young Upman 2, my guess, is that it would land somewhere around the P2, like, like mid, mid to mid high 8s. Yeah, mid, mid to, to high 8s. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, though, just hearing those ratings, uh, one, for me, just validates all of the unique palettes that we bring, and we obviously average those scores together. Those averages track with exactly how I would rank those sticks that we smoke. Those Agreed. exact ones. Agreed. I have not one gripe with that. Nope. Right. So, I, yeah. I, I do wish, I was just going to say, I do think that the Monty 2 at an 8.4 is a little low. That's, I disagree. To me, that, that should be a little higher just versus my experience where it's been. Well, that's the only one that's a little off. Here's the thing. So we've, we've discovered, and I think we all would agree, that there is a difference in the current Monty's that we're sourcing compared to the Monty's that we had, let's say, three, four years ago. Absolutely. They're more consistent. They're more flavorful. They're built better. The previous Monty's, some you couldn't even finish. Yeah. yeah. Right? I had, a, I had a Monty Media Corona this morning. With a cup of coffee, and I'm telling you, it at, was at the so movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> Before, <laughs> delicious, delicious smoke. Nice. And the other thing, you know, I just thought of this the other day, and this is kind of towards the end of summer and stuff. It was kind of a still a humid day, and I had a QD Coronas Claro. Oh gosh, what a stick! Yeah. Great yeah. stick. Awesome. I have always, always enjoyed that stick. Awesome citrus notes with a little bit of spice. We've had it indoors plenty of times. Great stick, right? We always f- try to find it. I had this outside on a humid day, late summer. The cigar tasted horrible. So yeah. I don't know what everybody's experience is when you guys yep. smoke, uh, especially a Cuban cigar where the wrapper is kind of thin and it's humid out. It burns weird. The flavor is off. I mean, I love to smoke outside, you know, in a, in a hot summer day, but you got to be careful when you smoke a cigar that's on a humid day. I mean, it totally ruins the whole experience. Yeah, you know, uh, one thing, honestly, I, only a, like a, a Padron Exclusiva would do well in that environment. For any other New World Millennium smokes great. I think in a humid environment, I don't think any Cuban would smoke well in a, yeah, over so the humid day. I agree with both of what you both statements that have been made. And, and when Rooster mentioned this the other day about that QD, not smoking well in extreme humidity, I've had the exact same experience. And I just thought maybe it was kind of a one-off. And then when you described everything you did, it was identical, extremely humid. And I remember the cigar was, it was the first time I tried a Schwa Supreme that we reviewed on the pod. And I, I was so excited to have this cigar sitting on my deck. It's humid as hell. And I light that thing up. And the flavor just got totally muddled. And it was nothing like when we've had it in a more controlled environment indoors or on a non-humid day. Um, so I do think, you know, my, my takeaway is when it's extremely humid, Cubans have thin wrappers. They do not fare well. It, it's like they just immediately absorb all the humidity yeah. and then it doesn't burn right. It muddles the flavor where when it's that humid, I would pull for a New World stick that's got a thicker wrapper that is just much better suited to handle that amount of humidity. Yeah, I think this, I think the cigar is like just because like what you said about the thin wrappers, mm-hmm. the cigar has like a tunnel effect almost. Like it's burning, like as if it internally. You know, internally, it's too fast. Yeah. Yep. So, right. so are the Cubans smoking new worlds in Cuba? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty damn humid down there. Yeah, that's a good point. I'll let you know in November. <laughs> you know, I, I've had the same experience. I mean, if it's humid outside, either I'll turn around or if I'm really desperate, I'll reach like, like you both have said for a new world. 
you know, uh, even even reaching for a new world in a humid, you know, humid environment, I'll never reach for something special mm -hmm. because uh, I never want to take that. I never want to gamble on a cigar in humidity. And I mean, even, you know, some of the evenings in the summer, we talked about this, how great it is to smoke outside when it's so nice. Even when it's like modest t humidity, I can still taste mm -hmm. differences in and, and feel differences in how the cigar smokes and burns. It really does affect it. Yeah, and you know, same thing on, really a, on a on a windy day. Oh, wind! Oh, I stay away I mean, from wind. That's yeah. the worst. It's the worst. Yeah, but kids, that's good. That's good advice for the listener, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just if you have something you love or special, I don't care if it's your birthday, your anniversary, you just you're you're you just had a baby at home. Do not smoke outside in humidity. Yeah, any any sort of special cigar because you're really you're really gambling. The exclusive is a great one. Yeah, yeah, of course. I would say any of the, the new world, let's say under 15 that we've reviewed on the pod, mm -hmm. you know, the aging room, the El Senador from EP Carrillo, yep. uh, and uh, of course the Exclusivo, I think are, yeah, are all great. The all, the, all the pub rooms, mentioned, I think, is all, would fare well. all the Davidoffs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They're fine. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding that this cigar is kind of i don't know i'm not hating it right now i don't hate it but i guess i i want a little bit more and i'm not expecting Monty to or any of the other flavors that, that we've mm. discussed on the other pyramids but i'd like a little more yeah. yeah i wish it tasted more like the aroma from the smoke yeah like initial on the light like what you got that aroma if it tasted like that that would be yeah a plus combustion's good on this cigar though it is it's burning well looking at your stick and how it's smoking it's nice yeah, yeah, to your point, Ben, the, con the construction even on this is yeah. great. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at, I think most of them, it's burning evenly. Yep. Um, great smoke output. I just, I mean, Gizmo said he wants a little more. Honestly, I want a lot more out of this cigar. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not happy with this. But I'm, I'm just trying to be reasonable with my expectations of the cigar, knowing that it's designed to be mild to medium, knowing that it's not trying to be appear as far as flavor or strength as, of some of the others that we've mentioned. So to me, expecting that is unreasonable, but I don't think this is delivering what it should be delivering. But, for, but for, you 20, know for $21. Yeah. For that, $21, there you go. Oh, at no. that price Oof. point, you have many options. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, I mean, yeah. I'm also going to say, look, I mean, this is crazy to even bring up this comparison, but I only say it because it was a cigar that completely surprised me that I thought I was going to hate. That little... Fuente Hemingway series Signature. that we had. Yeah. That was a natural wrapper. Yep. And I thought it was going to be way too mild and entirely uninteresting. And that cigar actually put out more flavor in that very mild, easygoing delivery than this ever could. And and that's where, you know, I, I that satisfies me more flavor wise than this. Yeah. I, I want a lot more out of this cigar. That was a shocking cigar. I mean, even an Epicure number two in Oyo, I feel like I get more interesting flavor out of that than this. And that's, a, I would call, a mild medium. Mm. Yeah. I'm I do love the flavor of that cigar. When it's on, it's on. Yeah. I just find that 25% of the time, it's just a, com a complete dud. I think I'm off of those completely. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. Same. Yeah. Try some other Vitolas of the Hoyos. Yeah. You might be surprised. Okay. Especially the San Juan. What's that? What shape? Yeah, Is right. that a regional? No, it's not oh. the Hoyo San Juan. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a Robusta. Oh. That's not the Rio Seco. Um, no, I think it's the San Juan. I like that cigar. It's a 54 yeah. ring gauge, and yeah, I, you guys really? know how I feel about 54 ring gauge. Yeah, you're off that gauge. Really? You liked it? I really liked it. It was actually wow. the best. It was wow. actually the best, aside from that one double Corona that we had that knocked our socks off. Oh, yeah. That, uh, that Rio Seco was fantastic wow. okay then we wow. should review this at some point and the reason i say that i've never had one but i remember sitting at our north lounge with puba and he lit one of those and about five ten puffs in he just threw it down in the asteroid he said he couldn't smoke oh, it boy. So i've been a little <laughs> scarred by that experience assuming that they must be bad but given what you're saying now I do i'm looking at gizmo's one. face right now he's like he's frustrated with that <laughs> con i'm not frustrated with it i just i just know that i'm not gonna say it you know we know what you're gonna say <laughs> it, i'm just gonna maybe reference the the humidity discussion we just had the hoyo san juan is also a 54 ring gauge it is yeah it's a big wow. stick yeah it is yeah. You know, and that's something that I talk, we talked about. I mean, I don't love cigars of that ring gauge. 
even though I love the flavor of an E2, the flavor of a QD54. I just don't love that size. But I think that those are cigars that we need to put in, in the rotation coming up because a lot of people love that ring gauge. Love them. You know? Yeah. So we got to do it. Well, especially American smokers. It's a very, I was about to go there. It's very American. Yeah. Yeah, we need to do a 60 ring gauge soon. <laughs> <laughs> what about never going to happen? What? What, what about the octagon? Can, oh, can we just tell this story? Uh, how about <laughs> octonaut? <laughs> <laughs> can we tell this story quickly? So we're at a cigar lounge. I think most of us have seen this at this point. And there's a guy in our cigar lounge that smokes this outrageous size cigar. I mean, I the biggest cigar I've seen in a retail shop is 60 ring gauge. I've never seen bigger than that. Right? No one else has seen a 65, 70, 80 ring gauge. And this guy smokes a cigar that is 80 ring gauge. It's obscene. It's a, it is obscene. It, it looks, looks like a baseball bat. It yeah. literally looks like a bat. You well, could actually hurt someone with this thing. <laughs> what did he say? It took him two days to smoke it one time? Oh. Like he, he wet it? That's a, that's a unique guy. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, Bam Bam, didn't he give you one? No, he did not. I, ha- I just looked at it and said very nice <laughs> i think instead of the fda trying to regulate cigars out of existence they should regulate no ring gauge larger than 60 i agree with that i i will get behind that lobby mm-hmm. a part of me can't do this you don't like it cigar and more yeah, yeah. Just, you know I'm, I'm curious there should be a we should do a poll of the listeners like what is your favorite ring gauge that's a good idea. Like what good, length, what size do you I guys like enjoy? Yeah, and, and to your point, you know, I, I, you know, and I, I wanted to go back to this for a second, but I would love for listeners to email us about, you know, what their favorite cigars, their favorite ring gauges, cigars we haven't done. Like, we need suggestions. We, we love when we hear from listeners. We've oh, yeah. used a lot of them. Yeah. We've used a lot of listener recommendations in both liquor and in cigars. So please email us. Yeah, it's exciting for us to hear back. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's, it's great to hear. And, and it kind of helps point us in a direction of what other folks are smoking that are outside of our group. Yeah. You know, and has certainly opened our eyes on, on quite a few cigars. Um, it- and then the other thing I wanted to ask um, is, you know, other cigar lounges just briefly, you know, outside of the uh, New York metro area that we, that we know of that really are destination lounges mm-hmm. uh, or places to avoid. I mean, well, Oh, no, no, Bam, go yeah, ahead. There's a place in Brooklyn. It's a Davidoff Lounge. Okay. Right around the corner from Peter Luger's. It's a great spot. You know, I'm in Brooklyn a lot. It's a good pit stop, have one or two, and continue on my day. Beautifully done space. It's an Opus destination for sure. I've got a ton of Opus there. But a uh, nice place. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I have to call out a, a cigar lounge in D.C., and I'll start by saying the craziest thing. You would think a city like Washington, D.C., right, where – power is concentrated and you know all the politicos are nations are destabilized with the push of a button <laughs> <laughs> that's the senator's correct. office yeah, it is <laughs> this is correct and so you would expect in a city like that that there would be tons of cigar smokers which there are and therefore there would be tons of cigar lounges and there is only one proper cigar lounge left standing in dc one? i was one. surprised when i heard that really it is crazy yeah. Wow. I mean, when I lived there, you know, 10 years ago, you used to have the place that I'm going to talk about. There was a, a little cigar shop that's still there. Draper's is a legendary place. It's honestly like probably the most famous cigar retailer in Washington, D.C. proper. And I couldn't believe I went there once travel started picking back up again during the pandemic. I went there for the first time in a while and I bought some sticks. And ironically, their selection is so good. You know what cigar I found there just on a whim? The uh, Don Carlos Shark. Oh, wow. Any retailer that has sharks on a random day. That's pretty surprising to find that. You know they do some good business there. and I was super impressed. That's cool. I I buy all this. I'm so excited. And I say, you know, I've never smoked one in Draper's. And it's not a proper lounge, but they have lounge-style chairs. And people will just buy some sticks, sit, and have a a cigar. And I had asked the guy if I could sit there and light this. And he's like, I'm really sorry to say this, but you, you can't smoke in here anymore. And I said, why? You This is your guy's decision? He said, no, the city made this bizarre rule to try to discourage any smoking indoors where they required you had to serve food in order to be able to do it, which then made all the tobacco shops in D.C. because they're not going to get the licensing for all this food, beverage, all that. And so they, you could no longer smoke there. So I had to take it, and thank God that place I'm about to talk about is nearby, and I was able to just bring it there and smoke it. Um, there was even another cigar lounge then that a guy who used to work and manage the place I'm going to talk about 
he opened his own lounge in Maryland, just outside of D.C., and it was a beautiful place. Civil Honestly, lounge? civil. Yeah. It, that's right. Pagoda used to live in D.C. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Honestly, one of the nicest design cigar lounges I've ever seen. But the location, it's just you have people that work downtown. They want a cigar right after work, kind of like, you know, Pagoda was talking about. He goes to Carnegie in the city because it's so convenient from his office. The location was so inconvenient. They just weren't doing good business. And over time, they actually shut down. So the last lounge left standing that's been there for ages is Shelly's Backroom. And what I love about this place, and there are so there's so many things to love. There are also some things to criticize. But you, Gizmo described the charm that Carnegie has, and this place has charm on steroids. I mean, it, it's, it's so iconic. It's been there so long. And the thing I give them credit for, I think the hardest thing when you have a cigar lounge, you kind of have to decide to go one of two routes. Either... You want the lounge to be incredibly nice and high-end and upscale, and you want to provide this real luxury experience, or you want it to be more comfortable, more casual, and, and kind of no frills. And this is the first place I have found that kind of is the best, an ideal balance of the two, where it's all wood paneling when you go in. They have some lounge-style seating, lots of just tables and chairs all over the place, and a bar in the back. Tons of TVs. You can watch sports there. Uh, but the clientele, you know, it's all people who are, you know, coming after work from, you know, the private sector or the White House or Capitol Hill. Uh, you will constantly see and meet congressmen in there, which is great. Um, is, it, is it really great, though? I say that because the ones, <laughs> the ones that smoke cigars, oh, they're you'd cool? be really surprised. Okay, they're actually okay. really nice. Right. Like well, people that I thought I would never enjoy a conversation with, and I've had some great Senator. Nights. His name is Senator. Senator. <laughs> this is true. Good point, Bam Bam. These are my people. <laughs> Any, any congressman that smokes gets my vote. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> and so I just give them credit because it's a very comfortable, no-frills place, but it's also nice enough that there feels like there's a real character about it. And um, now the, the downs, so the, the plus is uh, you can, this is crazy, you can bring your own sticks. There is no cutting fee. Wow. Mm, I like that. None. Yeah. The drinks are extremely reasonably priced under $20 for a Macallan 12 or some of these other things. In the nice. city, good luck. You'll never find that. Nope. Drinks are reasonable. They have a full food menu. You can order dinner. Food is pretty simple, but I've never had a bad, uh, a bad meal there. Uh, the downsides, the service is a bit of a novelty in the sense that for some reason, and I, I, I have to at some point meet the owner of this place, clearly whoever owns Shelley's has a real thing for Asian women. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because every single waitress, keep in mind, right, I lived in D.C. for six plus years, and I've been to D.C. well before that, and I still, I'm there once a month at least now for the last several years. I have never met any waiter at that place that is not Asian or a woman. Doesn't exist. Not no. a bad thing. And it's not a bad thing, but the problem is, for some reason, these women that are hired there... Um, are not the most friendly or service oriented. <laughs> what was a blessing in disguise is the pandemic happened. And I will never forget the first time I went there when they, I was there probably the second week they were allowed to reopen fully. I have never been treated so nice in that place. They were so appreciative. So the pandemic fixed all of that. I think when you lose income, right, for that long, all of a sudden you have customers again. Yeah. There's a little change in perspective. Exactly. So the service actually has been ironed out. Now it's very friendly. They're, they're really great. They're on top of things. Um, and then the only other thing I would, com I, the only other gripe I have is when that place gets packed, which it does often, uh, not as much after the pandemic, but before any given night you're there. And the hours are great, by the way. It's like 2 a.m. They're open. Oh, I like that. Great hours. And uh, that place would get smoky. I mean, so many people, and they have they have huge smoke eaters in the ceiling all over, but I think the units are a little old. They probably need to be replaced. But when there's a decent-sized crowd, it's not a problem, but you'll just expect to dry clean your clothes the next day. <laughs> I just can't believe that's the only spot in Washington, D.C. In any city. Yeah, it's it's really I mean, there's, there's none in Georgetown? I'm sorry. I'm Alex sorry. Sir. There's one other. I'm sorry. This is my fault. The, the other place is uh, Casa de Monte Cristo. So JR Cigar used to have a cigar shop on M Street in DC, uh, close to downtown though, that you could, they had chairs you could sit and smoke. It wasn't a proper lounge, but you could have a cigar there. They then moved and, and relocated to a space that they built a lounge. I don't think it's a particularly nice lounge. It's kind of high top tables. 
some lounge style seating that's not particularly nice. And then they have an upstairs that's members only with actual nice lounge chairs and all of that. Uh, but so, the staff is so nice, so friendly. Um, you know, they, they kind of have a policy. You're not supposed to bring in other cigars, but the, every time I go in there, as long as I just buy one stick, so I'll buy a Padron, they'll let me smoke Cubans. They have no issue with it. Their happy hour is insane. That's cool. It's like, uh, I'm trying to remember when I would get there. You can get an old fashioned that's normally like, I don't know, 18 bucks for half price during happy hour. Wow. wow. I mean, great pours, by the way, the bartender there, this girl who's usually there like, uh, after work hours, phenomenal pours. But it's not the most comfortable place like Shelly's is. You could spend, you know, six hours at Shelly's easily. That place, I'll, I'll spend maybe a couple hours there, and then I'm ready to go back to my hotel. So there's one other spot. But to your point, it's still outrageous that that's it. Yeah, not enough. Yeah. So Okay, so we've hit, uh, we've hit D.C., and we've hit New York, which we have quite a bit of experience with. Are there any other highlight places that we should mention around the country? I, I will say uh, Las Vegas, to me, is a huge disappointment um, in the cigar lounges there. I know there is a new one. I mentioned that I asked Henry to visit a friend of ours. Uh, check out this new Eight Lounge, which is pretty high end. Um, is that the one that's got like a wine bar like it, in the back? It, it's it was, very it was, high uh, end. There was an article about yeah. it in CA. Yeah. 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 So the other ones, the Davidoff, the, the, the Casa Fuente, I think they're all huge misses. Um, what about them? I'm just curious. <clears throat> well, the Davidoff on the Strip is really the only game on the Strip that's not you know, tucked in a, a a mall or something, and it's just not great. This the stock is very very mediocre. At least when I was there, they didn't have, even have any Davidoffs. I wanted a late hour; they had none. Yeah, I was I there last a, year. Millennium Pyramid; they had none. The drinks are overpriced. The service is mm-hmm. mediocre. The chairs are tight. It's just not a. It's just it's just not worthy of it's, Davidoff. It's of not Geneva. really an indoor spot. No, it's, it's more a big like an outdoor. It's an outdoor circle. Yeah, and they have indoor and outdoor seating. It's just not great, but you it's know, really the only place. Yeah, to go. we talked about like humidity and stuff. The Vegas oh, gets hot. I was there in August. Horrendous. It was 120 degrees. They had these fans with misters blowing on you, and here you're smoking a Cuban cigar. <laughs> and we just talked about humidity. I mean, you know, it's gonna affect. So yeah. you want to smoke a David off there, obviously. Yeah, exactly. You know, if they have not, them. not a Cuban. Yeah, prices yeah. weren't great. Now I just didn't love that place. So the Casa, Vegas was Casa a mess. Fuentes is not bad though. It's all right. It's, it's the one so, in the Caesars. Yeah, it's in the Caesars yeah. Palace. It's a little dingy. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's okay. Yeah. That's a shame. I mean, you would think Las Vegas of all places. But you know yeah. what? You, you can smoke a cigar in the casino at the bar area. Apparently, they've restricted that, that more. That's not the case in, in, in all bars. I think they changed that. They've oh, used really? COVID. Like in Pennsylvania, um, you can't smoke cigars in casinos anymore, even when they've allowed cigarette yeah, smoking. Vegas is different, I think. No, but I, there's, there are a bunch of... Apparently, the, the union of employees who work at casinos in Vegas does not want smoking in the casinos. Yeah, but there were guys from... Uh, this Facebook group that they were there recently, not recently, like a few months back, they were yeah. able to smoke at the bar. Yeah, so they must have found one that that allowed it, but I, it's yeah. not it's not everywhere I mean, at, I was, like it used to. We were at the Venetian. At the Venetian, you could smoke cigars at the bar area, which was right in the middle of the entire casino. So you yeah. could, you know, that's kind of cool. But that was cool. last year. I don't know if it's. Mm. Uh, you know what? You know what's the worst? Absolutely the worst place as far as cigar laws go, Toronto. Oh yeah, Toronto is Canada's bad is, across the board, but not all of Canada. I think Montreal is still better, yeah. but Toronto, not even the LCDH, which I think it's on Bloom Street. You can't smoke in a La Casa del Habana. Wow, inside, crazy. Not only they have tables outside, you can't even smoke outside. That's that's ridiculous. You have to be there's I don't know thirty feet or fifty feet away from the place. This That's is ridiculous. Crazy. We bought a cigar there. I went to light it up, and she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, <laughs> "Lighting up a cigar in a cigar lounge. They have a bar, but you can't smoke there." She's like, "No, you can't smoke there." I'm like, "You can't." I'm like, "How about outside?" Like, "No, you can't smoke outside. You have to sit on a bench across the street <laughs> and smoke <laughs> and smoke that fifty dollars." And the prices are insane. Oh That's yeah, like the taxes. Canadian are nuts. prices. Yeah. I mean, a D four is going to be like fifty. Plus. Yeah, I feel bad for our Canadian friends. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's not fair. It's not fair. All right, boys. Let's uh let's rate the Fortaleza Reposado. I really, really enjoyed this tequila, and I think it uh it really was a nice pairing with the cigar, and I think it uh overshadowed it in a way, just in flavor and quality. So 
I'm giving it an eight. Okay. I, for me, the buttery finish is unique. All right. Pagoda. I don't even think it's fair for me to rate it. Um, um, I'd rate it a seven, though. No. Okay. He's a Scotch guy. <laughs> Damn, I'm, I'm surprised with your rating. Mm. I'm going to give it a nine. Goodness, love it. And, and I say that because, I mean, this is a reposado, so I'm comparing this to other reposados, and I would take this over Don Julio Reposado. Great and score. I, and I love that. Great score. So I got to give it a nine. I'm not even drinking it. Just by looking at the bottle, I'll give it a 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to give it a nine. I think it's My the man. best reposado I've ever had. It's delicious. Um, I love it, and I look forward to trying more. So hopefully it makes a lot of sense. But our Composite Lizard score, boys, on the Fortaleza Reposado is an 8.3. Very good score. So I think good. that's fair. Yeah. I think that's fair. Very good. All right. We're coming to the end here of the Diplomaticos number two. Uh, it hasn't done much for me here in the last third. As far as a change in flavor, it's still a little muted, a little muddled. Burning fine. Smoking fine. Yeah. It's just not great. Not great. Yeah, I'm it, not offended by it. Yeah. It did start off great. Mm-hmm. Not great, but it started out off pretty good. I mean, I thought it was kind of continue with that aroma that we were getting from the smoke, but it kind of fizzled off towards like the first third was not bad, but after that, it really fizzled off. Yeah. So if you want me to rate it, yeah. I'm going to give it a seven. Seven. Okay. I'm also going to give it a seven. I've been there since that second, third hit. I was all day at a seven. Honestly, I'm very surprised by your scores. Um, for me, a seven or higher is at least a somewhat recommend. I personally would never I recommend this. I could easily this. give it a six. Yeah I, yeah, I would never recommend this. I would also never smoke this cigar again. I'm going to be charitable only because I don't know why I'm being charitable. There's a thousand other Cuban cigars I would give someone over this. I'm going to give it a five. Oof. Wow. Wow. Pagoda. Yeah, I'm uh, closer to Senator. I like it. Makes me wonder, Arnold may have been right. You know, when you're smoking certain cigars, you might want to dip in the tequila. <laughs> no, no. You, you got to rub, <laughs> rub the wrapper you with rub the tequila. You rub the wrapper with the tequila. <laughs> and the tequila is right there. I'd be tempted See, that's a, a call, That's a callback to what? Episode two? <laughs> episode three? <laughs> three. That's awesome. So, um, yeah. I, you know, a five for me, too. Wow. Okay. I, I, I think the five is low. I this. think so too. Yeah, uh, I, I'm going to give it a seven. I didn't mind it. I took it down to the half inch. Yeah, halfway through. I don't like to use the word flat or muddled because that's a, to me it's insulting to this cigar. But I think seven is a fair score. It's fair. So, so the composite lizard score, boys, is a six point two. Oof. Uh, I, I think that's I think that is representative. Like we talked about, I think that's a fair score for the cigar. That's okay. Yeah. Now I'll tell you the reason why I gave it a seven. And it's because I, this cigar was not made for a smoker like me. I don't think it was made for smokers like us. No. Now, with the construction, the burn, the smoke output, and even the flavor, which I gave it a seven for that. But when I give this to my father-in-law, because I have a <laughs> bunch of these. I was just going to say that. This is your father-in-law. When I give cigar. this to my father-in-law, his head's, the back of his head's going to blow off. <laughs> He's going to be, this is the greatest Cuban cigar I've ever had. Because this is what he loves. Mm. But what about the price for this particular cigar? Now price? that, the price stuff, the That's price a is a problem. It's a problem. The price is a problem. But you can't fault the construction, the burn, the smoke output. No. It is a well-built cigar. I just go back to why I'm really frustrated with this cigar a $10 Arturo Fuente Hemingway series that is not made for me, right? That, that cigar is not full enough in flavor for me to regularly smoke that. But I could recognize and appreciate that. That puts out interesting enough flavor. I remember how nutty and creamy, and we, we were so many things we were shocked that we liked about that cigar that I would give to someone like your father-in-law that I think would actually really appreciate that cigar where I would not... Uh, I would literally 60% or more of this cigar, all I tasted was tobacco. I hate saying that. Yeah. I think it's ridiculous to say that's what a cigar uh, flavor note you're getting, but that's how muddled the flavor was. I got nothing oh, wow. other than burning tobacco <laughs> for 60%. The first third is where I was getting some interesting flavor, and that's it. So I, I just, I wouldn't give this, even we talk about a guest humidor. If I had random folks over, I'm sorry, I would not hand this out. I mean, on, on the on the light, it was promising. It was tasty. Right. Yeah. Was, yeah. So think about a $5 Tatuaje. 
Petite Casa Doris is well, that'll blow is, this, more, this guy's is doors more off. satisfying yeah, 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 than a yeah. $20 Diplomatico number two. Right. A diplomatic, just the name itself. I mean, you, you're looking for something else. Looking for looking for more than yeah. what we got out of this right. stick, and therefore the score is reflective of that. It's all fair. It makes me want to reach out for the other diplomatica, the Padron. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I, I just quickly want to go back uh, to the ratings of the other pyramids. Uh, we went through them before, so this fits uh, in uh, the number five slot of six, uh, right above the San Cristobal de la Habana La Punta. That was a 5.9. This was a 6.2. So do you think that is appropriate? I do. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think both cigars, the flavor was incredibly muddled, mm. and I didn't get a whole lot out of it for most of those smokes. So I, for me, I think they're right where they should be. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. So again, Upman 2 and 9.8, the P2 and 8.7, Monty 2 and 8.4, Vegas, Romania, Unicos, and 8.2, uh, the San Cristobal, De La Habana La Punta was a 5.9. And the Diplomaticos number two tonight, boys, was a 6.2. Right so, above it. Yeah. So that alongside the Porto Laser Reposado at an 8.3. I think, uh, I think we got our money's worth tonight, at yeah. least on the tequila. Yeah. One Agreed. hit, one miss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Very good. Thanks, guys, so much. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave us a rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us, loungelizardspod, P-O-D, that's loungelizardspod at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram, at loungelizardspod. We really appreciate your time, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>